What's up, everyone? It's episode 26 of the main stand. Uh, we're back with Mitch, Pat, drinking a few brews tonight, um, enjoying some Champions League, some European football this week. We're here to talk about everything. Everything that happened you know, last weekend, this week in the Champions League, and what we're going to be looking forward to. With some interesting stories along the way, we're going to do Out of Bounds, um, and Pat's going to go over the Monk and Gladback minute. So, a lot of fun topics tonight. Um, I guess if you boys want to talk right in, Pat, I don't know if you want to talk about City's past game at the weekend. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm drinking a beer in celebration. Yes. Uh, City rocked up to the Emirates and gave Arsenal their only defeat at home this season. 3-1. Um, it's a really good performance from City. Honestly, Ruben Diaz back into the 11 is uh, massive for, for City in this run-in. I think that was the most complete game I've ever seen out of Erling Holland as well. He was getting into Arsenal's center backs from minute one, making life extremely difficult for them. Um, if the referee properly did the onsides and offsides calls, we would have gotten a pen. Uh, you know, I'll take it. Really, really good city victory. Gifted a goal, but what a finish by De Bruyne to open the scoring. Um, was never a pen on Saka. I've never, ever seen that call before in my life, but it is what it is. 3-1 win, top of the table. I might have called it a little early. I might have called the title race a little early. Yeah, I'm going to need some big-time credit. If, if Arsenal go on to blow this, I think your level on points, uh, Arsenal the game in hand. Um, yep. If Arsenal go on to blow this, I am going to take a little bit of credit, but it is really – it is so predictable. I mean, the City team, I don't care how mediocre they might have been playing. I always kind of back them to figure it out. Um, Arsenal just – it's their first big title challenge. I think it's a big ask, especially I think them knowing that City have already caught up to them with 17 games to go or whatever it is now. Um, I think 15. that's a pretty daunting thing to look at for that Arsenal team. Yeah, man, I think, I, I think too, and then Mitch, sorry, and then you can yeah, say no, you're good. Your, your piece. I think this game you re really saw the experience in the two sides really show. Um, City have been in this situation like six years in a row. It's nothing new for them to be chasing a good team, going to the, you know, the current leaders' home stadium and needing to get some kind of a result. They They've won – three of their titles under Guardiola being not top of the table at Christmas time. We're used to chasing. And I think this Arsenal team, like you mentioned, Josh, the age and the inexperience really is, it feels like it's coming to the forefront. They looked nervous. They looked uncomfortable after city took the lead. They really had to do everything they could to get back into it. Um, and yeah, I, you know, 0, 0.0 non-penalty xg between the 23rd and the 83rd minutes of the game so they had a hot start and they they pressed when they were 3-1 down but ultimately i i think city it was measured it was controlled it was a really good defensive performance from them and i think that like i said that the experience showed through the the team that's been champions four of the last five seasons showed why uh in this game for me yeah and you can't really say much more on it i I really just want to kind of look at Arsenal's last three games in reference to yeah. this game as well. Um, you see a lot of a lot of new players come in, uh, Jorginho specifically, uh, in this three game stretch, and it has taken some time for them to figure out where the new people are and how to use them. Uh, Trossard came in at the end of that game for for just a cameo, somebody who seemingly likes to to slay the giants um and he he just didn't find the ball uh i think ramsdale looked really really shaky for for arsenal especially after um you know some pretty solid performances he's put in this season and i uh i don't know i just think the the changes will iron themselves out it's going to take a little bit of extra time but i wouldn't count arsenal out quite yet it did look shaky but they do still have a game in hand, uh, and it is tied on on points at this point. So it's going to be a really exciting finish for the season. Yeah, Arsenal need to fix whatever the issue is uh, immediately, though, because if City keep the pace that we've seen City keep 
in the, the past couple of seasons in these tight title races, Arsenal can't afford to slip up. No, they can't. Anywhere. And then they need to win at the Etsy hat as well. Because that game in hand won't matter if City keep pace with them and then beat them yeah. in the river in the next fixture as well. Yeah, what a goal from Super Jack Grealish too, right? Oh my god, dude. What a player to support that goal, man. I was so happy for him. Did you see two two funny things with that? The first one was, did you see in the in the tunnel he's walking out and he's talking to Ramsdale and he asks Ramdale Ramsdale if his goal took a deflection or not before it went in and then they asked him about his celebration because he kind of like grabbed his shirt mm. and he was like yeah i was gonna take my shirt off and then i remembered i was on a yellow that's funny i thought he was gonna like rip his shirt off it looked like he was going for like the middle of it yeah uh, he, he said he was gonna take it off but he remembered he was on the yellow guard he's so about he to superman that hoe he's honestly i i don't know as a liverpool fan some people might find this weird but i think he's a pretty likable guy I fucking love Jack Grealish, man. I think if you dislike Jack Grealish, you're a bitter Aston Villa fan or... Yeah. I don't, I don't know. You just don't look at the full picture. I think Grealish is, like, such a cool dude, and I love that he's at my club, and he's been balling out these past couple of weeks, and he's starting to slowly repay the money we paid for him. I really like Grealish. I'm really happy he's in good form, and I could not think of a player that I'm happier for to score that game winner. Quick little bit here, Pat. If you had to pick one city player right now to get a beer with, would it be Jack or, or someone oh else? Oh, my God. Fuck yeah. I, was, <laughs> I, would, I would love to get a drink with Jack Grealish. Are you kidding me, man? I'll pay. I don't care that he's rich. I'll, be, I'll get the first round. Jack would be a good night out, I think. Um... Yeah. Jack, if you're listening to this, come come get a Heineken with me. I, I, I've got a – well, actually, that's news we'll save for later when everything is fully confirmed. We'll talk off air, Josh. <laughs> about some cool shit i think i've gotten the words that's, go. that's, that's, that's an off-air conversation for now um i think the other premier league game we wanted to talk about me and mitch specifically because it it's, really was a joy for us the merseyside derby um we were just back mitch i mean i think that was the liverpool team we've been waiting to see and that gives me full confirmation that like anyone who said jurgen klopp has lost that dressing room or anything like that is so full of it nine days rested this team so well the the pressing was on everything about this team was sharp and it's so good to see the guys have been a little off it you know Salah, darwin you know really kind of back involved and gakpo gets his first goal for the club so uh, a perfect night beating everton 2-0 um sending them down to the championship hopefully it was it was honestly like a christmas morning like you you wake up and it's derby day and we've we've had a very tough go of it lately so I didn't walk into it with very many expectations. I don't think either of us did. Uh, but the boys got up for the derby. Just it—it it was so good to see the fight in in Robbo. Just the absolute piss taking throughout the game. Um, I can't speak highly enough of Bychetich. He's been phenomenal for for the youngster that he is stepping into this side. Um, just all in all a phenomenal phenomenal game yeah by was thanks really, to really Cody. good thanks to connor <laughs> cody for letting gakpo score he's a scouser at heart what can i mean he's uh he's a liver pudlian so what, what can you do i i also agree with the by comment he was great man man of the match performance from him it goes without even saying because it was that kind of it was like a great performance but also like an unnoticeable one is like he just didn't mess up which is great for a young player he was um, everywhere. Yeah, he was. Robertson, I just love, again, like what you said, Mitch. I mean, laughing right in Pickford's face. Uh, doesn't get better than that. He's such a shithouser, and you, you love him if he's on your club. That shit was comedy. I think Robbo's a twat, and that shit had me laughing really hard. I thought that was so funny. Yeah, and Cody coming up to him, too. And then it's a whole big scuffle. My favorite thing, I think, of the whole scuffle is Darwin Nunez running from the bench with his hood up and, like, the little long coat, just ready for a fight. I mean, he's a crazy bastard. I love everyone on this team, and this game just fully just has me back as a Liverpool fan. I haven't had a reaction like that to a goal when Sala broke the deadlock in a while. Um, and just, to, I, again, I'm laughing at Pickford because it's funny. Um, to watch the replay after and see where Pickford was positioned for that goal was comical. The whole thing was just laughs. It was great. It was it was a game that you afterward are are glad you sat down and watched. Mm. Yeah, and I have to ask you too, Mitch. Well, right now, I mean, obviously this is one game, and we've had a bunch of these this season that it's like it feels like it puts us back. 
we're, we're six points off top four, I think, with a, a game or two in hand, depending on where you're looking at. Um, two. Yeah, it's two for really a two. lot. Um, is top four still an option for us? Um, I think with the injury boosts we're getting back, I think I think it's too soon to tell. Obviously, I'm I'm my confidence isn't quite there yet, especially with the uh, the week we have ahead of us. Uh, but I think if we can just utilize this little bit of momentum from a big match in a derby, albeit it's Everton, um, I th- I think I think we're still having our sights set on a top four run. It this club isn't isn't going to lay down and, and sixth is not acceptable. Um, and I don't think anybody is saying that. However, with what we've had this year, it's hard to say top four is within reach, but sure. we've, we've been here before we've had the injury bug. We've been, been light and we've gotten hot late uh, when we need it. So I, th- I think it's doable, but I'm not on the, on, on the ship yet. Yeah, I think I think we're kind of we're, we're close, and like you said, it, with guys coming back from injury, Van Dyke, Bobby Firmino, Diogo Jota, Luis Diaz back running today at Kirkby. I mean, that would that's a huge addition late in the season. So love to see where this Liverpool team is going. Um, and look, we'll, we'll end it at that. I mean, it was just a great game. Um, that can be pretty much it for the Prem. I think what's happened this week, nothing else too crazy aside from you know Jesse Marsh getting sacked and kind of bound, you know, there was a rumor about him going to Southampton that kind of falls through nothing else. huge just happened in the Prem this week. Um, we'll move it right along to the champions league four games this week. The first kind of set of the round of 16. Uh, we'll start it off with AC Milan Tottenham. You guys have any comments on that one? I was actually watching the other one of these games, but I did see the goal AC Milan scored. Yeah, Very Brian scrappy. Diaz. Raheem Diaz, former City guy, getting in on the scoring for them. Um, honestly, both of these teams are so shit. Like, AC Milan are in <laughs> awful uh, league form, and Tottenham are fucking Tottenham. So this is just like the dunce derby. Just the two yeah. teams that are fucking terrible duking it out in Europe. Um I think Conte's yeah. going to be out for a while, too. It just came out, I think, earlier that his recovery is going to be longer than he expected. Mm-hmm. Like what you said, too, Pat, both these teams are a shambles. I tried to pull the stat on Manix's show earlier this week, but Tata Rosanu, the goalie, um, he's been playing for a while, and I don't know it off the top of my head. how. I think he's, like, saved six shots in the new year of, like, of like 26 shots he's allowed like 18 goals or something like that or at least that's what it was like a couple uh, weeks ago Ooh, yeah crazy he's bad. real bad the, the fans are like ready to kill him <laughs> that's some loris carius type shit shout out loris um and pat you you said you watch this one bayern munich psg i'm over here drinking bavarian beer uh and the bavarians won this one i think bayern were a little lucky to get away from that one nil after Mbappe came on, it was a completely different game. Um, yeah, Bayern looked really good, but the PSG on the counter once I, I think a fully fit Mbappe and all Bayern only being up one nil, I think PSG will end up winning it. Really? Uh, I think they'll turn around to the next fixture. Yeah, PSG looked really, really good as soon as Mbappe came on. They were threatening beforehand, they just didn't really have the pace to get in behind. Um, I think Neymar was trying to do a little too much at times uh, to, to get PSG away in the attack. Uh, I think Bayern are really strong, but I think they're really susceptible on the break. And sure. I think Mbappe coming back into the side fully fit, get, running at them for a full 90 minutes. There's no way they keep them off the score sheet. There were two like marginal offsides calls um, mm-hmm. between, you know, PSG or between Bayern Munich and PSG scored three after Mbappe came off the bench. So, I, I think that a fully fit Mbappe, yeah, I, I still think PSG get through this tie, but Bayern look really strong. So, do you think the winner of this match has a, the potential to win it all? Yes, yeah, for sure, for sure. I think with the the four Messi's been in this year, Neymar looking like he kind of wants to play again, Mbappe in someone like the best form of his career. I think the only thing that's going to stop PSG is PSG. Uh, we've seen it in the past, them kind of not really being able to get up for 
the big moments in the Champions League, kind of, you know, Man City syndrome um, in the later stages of the competition. So, sure. yeah. Uh, but I, I do think winner this, for sure, is a, is a heavy favorite for me to go on. Uh, next one, another third consecutive one nil game here uh Dortmund Chelsea I think this one more than anything was a great performance from the fans that yellow wall um just another great Champions League night there Kareem Adeyemi gets the goal and uh probably pretty unlucky for Chelsea I think they had oh, quite very. a few chances but uh they they hit the they yeah. hit the bar and then the rebound off the bar the like ensuing attack from Dortmund was the Adeyemi goal yeah, I know. Crazy stuff. Uh, but I think Potter now two wins in 15 games for Chelsea. So they're at a, a breaking point for sure. Mudrick is on a 007 watch too. Zero games, zero goals, or zero goals, zero assists, seven games. He's on 007 watch right now. Sorry. My man's Gakpo escaped that. So now, yeah, now we're barely, on barely. Barely. <laughs> That uh, it, it is an interesting one. I I did have Dortmund kind of getting out. I think they were my underdog to win in the round of sixteen. So, um, and then the last one, Benfica Bruges. Uh, Benfica won this one two nil. I think these teams are pretty evenly uh, matched, but I would say that no one is really surprised by Benfica going through. They have quite a bit of depth. Uh, some attacking options with the likes of David Neres. Um, yeah, and some of those guys. I would agree. I think Benfica comfortably. In this tie, I don't think they're as close as people say they are or think they are. I, I think Benfica are a really, really good side, even without Enzo Fernandez. I think they have a lot of potential to be a dark horse in this competition and knock off some of the big boys in the later rounds because they're definitely getting out of the round of 16 unless, you know, there's an epic collapse in the in the return sure. leg. And we obviously have next week's games and stuff too, um, you know. There, there is some big ones. Obviously, Liverpool, Madrid. You're playing Leipzig, which I, I think is going to be a really I'm easy match scared. for you. I, I, I don't know. I think you're going to dance spooked. by. We're in good form, so I, I do feel good about that. But teams that have really gotten at City this year are like the counterattacking sure. teams, and that's that's Leipzig in a nutshell. So I'm a, a <laughs> little spooked by them. I, I hope we beat Madrid. I. They've you're just, not. I don't know, man. I, I think you're getting pumped, brother. But. I don't think we're going to get pumped. I, I think we're bringing guys back at the right time. You know, Van Dyke can start. I, I like Jota, too. Um, I think those guys give us a little bit more depth. And Madrid are good, but they definitely haven't had the best season as well. Yeah, so. yeah. That, that's fair. I don't know. It's the same. I'm going to use this argument for Real Madrid in the Champions League until it stops happening. There's just something about them when the anthem plays that no other team can match you guys come the closest for sure but no yeah. other team can do what they do when they hear the champions league anthem i appreciate the sentiment that we're the closest i, I appreciate yeah. that they, it, it used to be milan but they're kind of shit now and you know yeah Bayern probably too i guess but they're kind of yeah I can't think of uh, what do we got for the other two? Because we we've Inter met... Porto and yeah, Frankfurt yeah. Napoli. Napoli's gonna fucking roll um, Frankfurt. Yeah. I don't care how good Frankfurt's environment is. Napoli is on an absolute tear, man. Dude, low key Napoli could win the Champions League. They're they're my dark horse to make like a, I think a, like a an Ajax type run, beat a big dog and get to like the semifinals. I don't think they, they can beat a couple, final, but. They're fucking rolling, dude. Who, sure, yeah. what back four in Europe can handle them on the break? I don't know. Uh, there isn't one, dude. There isn't one. They're really, really good. They are. I worry about them later on, especially if Serie A goes the distance, um, mm. which it could. I, I think Inter are kind of climbing back up. Um, so we'll see. But Inter Porto, I couldn't give a shit about. I think Inter is going to win that. But Porto have really taken a step down for me. Um, that's that's Champions League, boys. Do you have any other comments there? I I I really just want to double down on Napoli. Yeah, they're fifteen points clear in Serie A. They're it's not going the distance. They're fifteen points clear, and they've scored twenty four more goals than Inter. That's not going the distance. They're gonna be able to rest their best guys. Damn, I thought I league. thought it was closer. We're not a logistics company. They, I, I didn't know that either. I double checked. The, they're fucking flying. I thought it was season. like eight. No, they could win the champ. They could win the Champions League. They, 
15 points clear in the Serie A. That, that's the only tournament they have to care about after, like, March. Because they're going to win it by, like, Easter. They're going to win the Serie A by Easter. Well, I guess we'll find out if Osman's a big game player. FIFA says he is. Kavar... <laughs> Kavar Donna. I've I've literally yeah. just I've given up and I'm calling him Kavar Donna every single time. I mean he's what is it Kavar Shkelia? Kavicha, yeah, something like that. He's a goal away from a goal and an assist away from a league double double. Oshiman's twenty GA. Lozano is the weak link of their front three. They're these guys. They're ballers, man. They're balling out. Yeah, they they have really good depth. Uh, they go pretty much a you know. 11, 12, 13 deep. Marco Ruiz got six assists from left back. City, sign him up. We need one. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, the distribution. Not much else, I think. Or, or Pat, we'll, we'll, how about we switch it over to you? You can talk about Monk and Gladback for a minute. I don't want to. They're fucking terrible. Yeah, <laughs> Pat's, Pat's, Pat, I think, wishes he didn't sign up for this at the beginning. I'm not having any fun with these guys. So let's let's just look at uh, – so I'm much glad, but, you know – we sold Jan Sommer to Bayern Munich, and uh, it's showing. Four wins in our last ten. One win in the last five. Tenth in the Bundesliga. And in our last five, we have only scored five goals. We've conceded nine. Uh, we're so fucking shit. I'm not getting that jersey. Mitch, your money is very safe. We're we're convincingly mid-table in the Bundesliga right now. Uh, Taram might be leaving. Uh, I think AC Milan are in for Taram this summer. Uh, and fucking, we're capitulating. We're collapsing. Club sucks. I hate it here. Fuck Club sucks. Pat's gonna Fuck have the, the fucking I'm not any Gladback fun. fans on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Fuck the Foles. We're not having any fun over here. Uh, Turam's a baller. That's the only. That's all the fun I'm having. Turam's a baller. I like Playa. I miss Yan Summer. I I don't get to watch that anymore. <laughs> that's great. That's the Munch and Gladbach minute. This is hell. It was exactly a minute. Congratulations. Um, looking forward to this weekend. Don't have any crazy games. You have Forest, Pat. You'll probably roll them. Um, we should. Liverpool have Newcastle. I think that one's a tasty matchup. Especially after Newcastle just drew with Bournemouth. Well, Newcastle, yeah. they've. I think they've. that's not the only game they've dropped recently, I believe. Um, and right, Liverpool, you know, you think with this bounce, they might be able to put something together here, so... Will definitely be interesting. It's at you know St James Park, which is going to be a rocking environment. Um, Newcastle have dropped a couple. They're they're down in fourth now. Yeah. They have a game in hand on United, and they're still five points behind. Yep. So that'll be interesting. And then Everton versus Leeds, I think, is another one. Uh, Leeds have Everton, and then Southampton next week. So it's a really big couple of weeks for Leeds. Um, mm. and a couple of big weeks for Everton too. I mean, Everton are on the verge of relegation. It very well could be a reality for them this year and without yeah, they're, Richarlison they're looking bleak they're in the zone they're in the relegation zone rather a point behind Leeds they need to win this weekend Brighton yeah. Fulham is a, another matchup to keep your eyes on this weekend too mm, yeah that's got European sure. implication that's got Europa League implications all over it man that's a big game for the middle that they're they're level on points 35-35 a Fulham win puts them back at six so some interesting stuff happening both domestically and in Europe something to keep your eye on we'll be here to break it down all next week um i do have out of bounds this week and i i have four pretty good topics for you guys i'm um, excited i'm we'll, so ready yeah we'll go in inclining order from least interesting to most interesting first things first and this is again it's a moderate thing but um the mls times adidas kits uh they've been really really good fire fire really good they all fucking rock there's not one team that has a bad kit that I've seen. It's really like the first year in like four or five years where it feels like it's a good strip of kits across the board. Um, I really like the minimalistic Adidas logo. It looks very different on the shirt uh, across the league. And uh, it looks like we're going to have the same home unis. Uh, it seems like the MLS has been doing this. It's like one year on, one year off, where it's like we rotate it every other year, each other kit. And I, I actually like that uh, a lot. It keeps keeps some kind of familiarity year over year. Yeah. I uh, Minnesota's is going to come out tomorrow, and Minnesota's has pink in it. It's going to be blue, pink, 
and black. That rocks. Which is going to be, I, it's going to be awesome. I really like the Revolution, the pattern on the Revolution one. I really yeah. like the Rebs jersey this year. Like I like white and red helix. Yeah. Sick. I like uh, the one that really stood out to me came out today, Chicago Fire. Um, it's like all white with like red and blue kind of like arrows all around it. Hmm. Um, is it Philadelphia whose jersey I saw that I really rock with? Oh, yeah. I think I saw that one as well. Stand by. Logistics. I'm pulling up the Union Twitter, and I don't know how to spell Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Just go watch Big Daddy. You'll figure it out. I can't. I, I spelt it so wrong that it's just not showing up. The Sounders is good. The Red Bulls is good. The Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Union with the just the snake. Yes, and it's like yeah. tan. Yeah. yeah, the tan yeah. and blue camo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that is the one I was thinking of. I, we're not going to talk about how I spelt the word Philadelphia in my Twitter search bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, and th- this one's fun because he went to both of our clubs. Will Farrell making his rounds in England. Uh, went to Wrexham, Man City, and Liverpool. I, I love Will Farrell. Posted a couple pics of Jack Grealish. Yeah, posted. I think he was with all the Liverpool lads too. It makes you wonder why he's over there. He's repping LAFC, but you, you have to think if he's maybe looking at more ownership, uh, maybe just learning from bigger clubs in in Europe. Interesting to say the least. I maybe. think it would be really cool to see that he's doing this because he's going to have like a cameo on Ted Lasso next season. Yeah, Ted Lasso also comes out March 15th, season three. Mm-hmm. I couldn't be more I'll, excited for that. I'll do you one better. Uh, I want him to play every position on a football pitch like he did with the baseball field. I don't know if you guys remember that. Yes. Um, I think it was like five or six years ago now. He flew to, to nine different stadiums <laughs> and played an individual position in each one of the stadiums and i i would love to see him in net for liverpool it'd be hilarious that shit would have me creasing we also forget that he is an experienced manager um kicking and screaming is my favorite soccer movie of all time mm. true true it, it's a classic beyond sun uh i could name off pretty much all the players on that team like in mike decca the tigers <laughs> um anyway we'll move third topic this is a good one Neil Warnock is back in management, taking the job at Huddersfield. Um, I, I just love Neil Warnock. I, the, the theme today is the people I love. Um, it's funny to just get more videos of him. We're we're gonna get some more beautiful internet gems for sure. I wish they would do like no, maybe not the Amazon one, but like a behind the scenes documentary with him in it, where we just have like unfiltered access to his mind and thoughts. Mm. that could be that, a dangerous place i don't think they should do that i think some shit might slip <laughs> it's neil warnock i don't know if that's a good idea that's true it's a very that's dangerous true. game but before i forget about it too i'm gonna actually filter back to the mls before i go to my final topic which the final topic is nuts way worse than any of the ones before um but i do have an update on minnesota united um and again, this is before we go into anything else. They did issue a statement on Emmanuel Reynoso. He's been suspended without pay for not showing up to camp. So either he's in jail and didn't disclose to the team, you know, how complicated his legal issues were for pistol whipping a 16 year old, or he's pushing for a move. If he pushes for a move, I think my MLS fandom is officially done. No, at least you have the revs. Come to the revs. I don't know if I can do that. You can. You brave the Minnesota hard. cold for a, a men's national team. You know how to cheer for the red, white, and blue. Support uh, and- local. And this is your local now. <laughs> Forest City, baby. Um, and then the last one, OGC Nice. Nice. I know it's not I think nice. It's nice. Nice. I think it's Nice. Um, has filed a, a, an official complaint with legal authorities um, because a porn movie was filmed in the bathroom stalls of their, during their game against Lille on January the 29th. Um, a homemade porno, I might add. Uh, but yeah, the two fans just went, went at it in the stalls, and uh, OGC Nace is, uh, I think, going after him in court. Uh, that is funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking 
hilarious. Who found that? Who who was was scrolling the black and orange website that works for Nice and found that shit? That's what I want to know. Well, There's got to be a mother. Astrid Wet is in the responsible for all of this because people are typing in Chelsea fans. Probably there are probably people typing in fans of all clubs because of Astrid Wet, and now it's filtering into French football. Jesus Christ! All boils down to Astrid Wet. Someone uh, before they said what game it was from, someone had replied to the tweet saying, "Was it was it during the game against Brest?" So another ah. another league <laughs> team. <laughs> Uh, yeah, mom and that's dad good. when they say they have uh, all or nothing at home. Yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> what so out of bounds is. That... That's so funny. I want to know how they found it. That's yeah, like, we need more info. We'll probably maybe I if we tune into the deposition. Know. I need to know who is like. All right, listen. So I found this completely unrelated to what I was actually doing. <laughs> so somebody sent it to me. I definitely wasn't looking. Anyway, someone filmed the porno in our bathrooms. Like, how how do you bring that up naturally? Someone at the club during work. Nah, it's got to be some TikToker. (laughs) Some TikToker sent it to the sent it to the man the uh, the the head official in the office. It was like, hey, this your bathroom? (laughs) (laughs) That might be the best out of bounds talk. That like when when we came up with out of bounds as a segment, this was the type of topic we were looking for. And boy, did OGC Nice deliver this week. Can, can so I just good. can I just say uh, something that I've realized? It seems like all of our out of bounds topics have to do with football in France. We have <laughs> we have the we have the PSG beating alleged beating to get on the team on the women's team. We have witch doctors Witchcraft. and we have pornos. It's an unbelievable scene out there in uh, Ligue mugging yeah muggings witchcraft and sex pretty much describes french football <laughs> sorry to my french people but uh your football organization's fucked last wait did the acardi shit happen while he was at psg2 yes uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my fucking god i still i'm pretty much i'm pretty behind them having their own tv show i think that would be a great bit of business keeping up with the acardis i'm saying i think they should do it Kicking it with the Acardis, so you're not just like, you know, <laughs> who gives a shit? Kim Kardashian has enough money. Let's rip them off. <laughs> what a what a great note to end the episode in episode 26 on, boys. Uh, any oh, final comments yeah. for the listeners? Up the Reds. Up the Reds. City might win the league. You've heard it here first. Pat's. It might. It might happen. It might. I might. I might have. I might have given the league away a little prematurely. <laughs> okay. Like, share, subscribe to the thing. Um, We'll see you next week. Deuces. Peace.